good morning students today we'll discuss uh, unit 5 of distributed systems basic uh, especially we are going to discuss about uh, peer to peer computing and uh, overlay graphs we'll see the content peer to peer system so our uh, peer to peer computing it refers to the application that take advantage of resources like uh, storage time cycles content man manpower uh, manpower availability at the end system. Uh, so everything will be uh, considered when we talk about this P2P system. In other words, uh, the P2P are, uh, computing architecture contains nodes that are equal participants in data sharing. All the tasks are equally divided between all the nodes. The nodes interact with each other as required as shared resources. Uh, this deals with application layer organization of network overlay for flexibility of sharing resources. So, this, uh, so in general, we can say the prominent feature of P2P network is uh, their ability to provide a large combined storage, CPU power, and other resources while imposing a low cost for scalability and for entry into and exit from the network. So the ongoing entry and exit of various nodes, as well as dynamic insertion and deletion of objects in P2P network is called churn. So churn is nothing but it is a, it is a, uh, Con uh, con considering about this entry and exit of various nodes in the P2P system. The impact of churn uh, should be as transparent as possible. So there are two types of the P2P systems are there. One is structured and another one is unstructured. So we'll see the difference between structured and unstructured P2P. In unstructured P2P, the construction of overlay network is very flexible. Whereas in structured P2P, uh, when compared with uh, unstructured, it is uh, somewhat uh, low flexibility. And uh, the resources are indexed locally in case of unstructured P2P. Whereas in structured P2P, it is uh, distributed remotely and uh, indexed using hash tables. The message can be broadcast or random work uh, in case of unstructured P2P, but in case of structured P2P, definitely it should be unicast. Unicast in the sense, for each individual node, we need to send a separate copy individually. And the network put best effort content location wherein uh, uh, Structured P2P, the network guarantees the content location. And when we talk about this overhead, there is a high overhead in unstructured P2P, whereas in structured P2P, we have low overhead. And uh, failure rate is also high in case of unstructured P2P, whereas in structured P2P, uh, moderate failure rate. And uh, when we talk about application, small scale and highly dynamic application, follow unstructured P2P, whereas uh, large scale and relatively stable application can be used with by structured P2P. Overlay network is constructed over another network. For example, connecting internet over telephone line is an overlay network. The topology of the overlay network is independent from the underlying network. Now you'll see the characteristics of P2P computing. These P2P networks are usually formed by groups computers. These computers all store their data using individual security, but also share data with all the other nodes. The nodes in P2P network both use resources and provide resources. So if the nodes increase, then the resource sharing capacity of the P2P network increases. The nodes in P2P networks act as both client and servers. Hence, it is difficult to provide adequate secu security for the nodes. This can lead to denial of service attached that is DOS attached. Then most uh, modern operating systems such as Windows, Mac OS, which contain software to implement P2P networks and uh, definitely with the help of P2P network we can use efficiently use uh, resources. Self-organizing nature is there because of scalable storage, CPU power and other resources there is a high possibility for self-organizing organizing nature and uh, Fast and efficient searching of data is possible because of this distributed control characteristics and the highly scalable. It is the uh, selection of geographically closed server is possible. That is, uh, we can use naming mechanism you know, by following this criteria. Apart from that, definitely security, authentication, trust, everything is we can uh, impose in this P2P uh, system. Now we'll see the advantages of P2P computing. Each computer in the P2P network manages itself. The network is uh, quite easy to set up and maintain. Uh, the server handles all the requests of the client. This provision is not required in P2P computing. 
and the cost of this are very scale. It is easy to scale uh, the P2P network and add more nodes. This only increases the data sharing capacity of this system. None of the nodes in the P2P network are dependent and the others are for their functioning. Hence, the network is fault tolerant. So, EC deployment and organization is also possible. But uh, still, it has some disadvantage. The major difficulty is it is very difficult to back up the data as it is stored in uh, different computer systems and there is no central server. That is uh, one of the main disadvantage. Apart from that, security also major concern. Over, overall, security in the P2P network uh, is very difficult as each system is independent and contains its own data. So that's all about uh, P2P computing basic. Uh, next one is Napster P2P system. So the developers of the original Napster launched the service as the P2P file sharing network. The software application was easy to use with a free account and it was specially designed for sharing digital music files in the MP3 format across the web connected network. So basically they started as a MP3 sharing system and uh, Napster uses a server mediated central indexed architecture organized uh, which is around the cluster of server that store direct indices of the files in the system the claims address IP, address ip and port and office bandwidth and the information about the file that the client can allow to share these are the two basic information uh, the central server is going to maintain in a table the basic steps of operation to search for content and to determine a node from which to download the content of uh, first the client connect to a meta server that assigns a likely loaded server from one of the close by clusters of server to process the client query. The client connect to the assigned server and forward its query along with its own identity. The server it responds to the client with information about the user connected to it and the files they are sharing. On receiving the response from the server, the client chooses one of the users from whom to download a desired file. The address to enable the P2P connection between the client and the selected user is provided by the server to the client. The directly serves to provide the mapping from a particular host that contains the required content to the IP address needed to download from it. So this is the exact operation behind the Snapster P2P system and the application layer overlay. The fundamental mechanism in P2P network is data searching. This depends on the organization of data and networks. The search algorithm for P2P network tend to be data centric. P2P system uses the P2P overlay, a logical graph among the fields that is used for the object search and object storage and management algorithms. Overlays can be thought as a network built over another network. Above the P2P overlay is the application layer overlay where communication between peer is point to point once the connection is established. The P2P overlay use some rigid organizational principles based on the properties of the P2P overlay graph structure uh, for the object storage algorithm and the object search algorithms. Unstructured overlays use very loose guidelines for object storage as there is no definite structure to the overlay graph. The search mechanism are more adapted and use some form of flagging or random walk strategies. Thus, object storage and search strategies are intricately linked to the overlay structure as well as to the data organization mechanics. It's all about application layer overlays. Uh, especially we will concentrate on data indexing and overlay. So here in this, um, this diagram actually shows the mapping between address space and object space. So data exactly uh, three types of indexing is possible. One is a centralized indexing, local indexing, and distributed indexing. So in a centralized indexing, from the name itself, use central server to store references or indexes to the data on many peers. The domain name server look, look up as, uh, sorry, look up, as well as the lookup by some early P2P network such as Napster, use the central directory lookup. Local indexes, the indexes, to the objects at various fields being scattered across other fields throughout the P2P network. To access the indexes, a structure is used in the P2P um, overlay to accept the indexes. Distributed indexing is the most challenging of the indexing schemes and many novel mechanisms have been proposed, most notably the distributed hash table. Various distributed hash table schemes differ in the hash mapping, search algorithms, 
diameter for lookup, search diameter, fault tolerance, and resilience to chunk. Distributed, this requires each peer to index only the local data objects and remote objects need to be searched for. This form of indexing is typically used in unstructured overlays in conjunction with flooding search or random walk search. That is what depicted in this diagram. And uh, that's all about the basics about P2P network and overlays. Thank you for listening.